Hi folks, Nick here recapping the day. Today is uh, June 10th and um, <laughs> to say the least, it's a green day across the board. We've got 1.4, 1.3% up on all indices. Uh, CNBC kept saying that the small caps were outperforming by a mile and they're wrong all day. I don't know why they get their headline. The small caps are actually are underperforming the NASDAQ and uh, underperforming the Dow and almost in line with the SPX. So I'm not sure what they're talking about. Let me show you something. You can't find red. This is 2,000 stocks. You can, you know, count them on two hands, two sets of hands. Uh, NASDAQ, you know, on one hand. Um, S&P 100, not one, you know, good luck. Uh, 500, maybe 10 red squares, cubes. So um, obviously a, that's what we call a broad-based rally. In the Dow, nothing red. Biggest contributor to the Dow, Microsoft, I think it's a giant box, it's up 2%, yeah, all by itself. So um, Apple underperformed, 1.15, so slightly underperforming the market. So this is what we call a broad-based rally. You know, they repaired a lot of the damage, and uh, let's uh, see the rally itself. We had a good open setup anyway, and then we had one giant rumor of uh, Germany wanting a deal. So wham we go, that's, uh, let's see here, uh, 98 to 20, 10 points uh, pop on that. You can see it in Apple, you can see it in NASDAQ, you can see it in the small caps. One notion is uh, late uh, afternoon, the broader indices in Apple tried to rally, uh, whereas the small caps did not participate. Uh, not to say that they were red, it's just that this is the high of the day and they never revisited it, whereas the S&P 500, this is the high of the day, they revisited it, they couldn't break it. I mean, they fell short by a penny. It's just not good. Um, why couldn't they break that penny? That's my opinion. The NASDAQ did it, the NQ, that's the minis. Apple did it, but not the ES. Anyway, so did they accomplish a lot today? Sure. Did they, are they, is it a bullish setup? Not any more bullish setup than it, we had yesterday. Uh, what happened is now we're back to the stalemate. Oh my gosh, 18,000 on the Dow, 40 cents above that. We're 40 cents above the 18,000. We are $5 above the 2100 SPX. This is where we've been stuck for a long time. That's exactly the middle of the range. And this is where uh, in the morning right up I expected us to be. Uh, possibly based on the open interest. So here we go. Let's look at the indices. And I'm going to zoom in so we don't look at the older junk. All right. Boom. Uh, nice candle. Recovered this green line where I said we needed to. This was a doji. And it usually says we have a big move coming. Today just coincided that we had headlines with it. All right. So now, are we off to new highs? I don't know. This is a candle from where we started falling. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's switch over to the IW. Actually, let's go to the Qs. I like to do those in uh, the broader indices first. Uh, the Qs recover two candles. We still have much to prove, but now we're in way better shape. We're in the middle of this range of the white stuff. We lost this tightening range, and here we are. Volume is decent. I forget to look on volume on the S&Ps. Volume is decent, so it is a legit move. This is the best of them all. Now we're back into resistance territory in uh, almost everything, and uh, not everything, I'm sorry, in Apple and the small caps, and those are two cautionary tales there. Have we been here before? Yes, we have, uh, as recently as here. Uh, we couldn't hold the highs, but we've been here once before, somewhere around here, and we have not revisited the all-time high. So this is where the battle lies. Remember I told you small caps is where the battle lies? That is an emphatic move. Bears should be nervous here with the small caps. All right, and last week I said I can't make out the difference, um, the divergence between the bullishness of the small caps and the hesitancy uh, of uh, the, the broader markets. Well, this question came back up today. Um, so let's see a second move. Now, what caused this rally? What caused this rally? Well, it was, a, like I said, a headline. So you, I usually say relief pops. This is a relief headline because Greece is not exiting. There's a deal coming. Uh, usually are shortable. 
I remind us four months ago, thereabouts, we had nine times we had the same headline regurgitated. It started with Marusa Michelle Cabrera on CNBC saying, my people tell me, it was the evening, some Thursday, I think, and my people are telling me in Greece uh, that uh, they have a deal in the works. Boom, markets run. Next morning, they re yes, uh, we confirmed that that deal that we talked about last Friday, it's still working. Boom, another move up. They announced that, quote, deal nine times and markets rallied nine times without pricing it out. See, we, we rallied, we haven't priced it out. That's my point. And then if we get another headline, same headline of the, quote, deal, which never happened, by the way. What happened then is they kicked the can until now, and here we are. No deal. Just same situation. They're still in debt and no deal on the table. And now they're going to kick the can again. How many times are we going to rally on that news without pricing it out? Today, the rumor was denied by Germans. Said, hey, we have no deal. So that means that they have not priced it out, even though the, the rumor was denied. Okay? And it was just a rumor. So be patient. If you want to short nibble, don't put in – if you want to put 10 – contracts on a short position, just do five. Um, you can add five the next day or miss out. If, if we're, worst case scenario, you do not want to get caught short too soon. All right, so this is what happened. What's likely to happen? Okay, so now I have a few things I'm watching. Um, I do have concerns on uh, a few challenges ahead, one of which is leaders, Apple, is into um, resistance. Uh, the IWM is into resistance. Google is into resistance. A lot of prices that move today, is, uh, they're all into resistance. So I have to see how they go from here. Uh, spiking rates. Oh, my gosh. How could I forget, right? Um, well, here are, let's see, oil. Okay, that's another one. So let's put spiking rates up here. I'm going to show you the TNX. That's the 10-year. Um, today it was up 2.5%. That is a spike, okay? I don't care how long you've been looking at rates. That stuff does not happen often. Look at how emphatically we moved, and I'll show you what that means. A raising, rising, spiking rate should be market negative because it's an alternative to investing in the stock market. So that's one. Also, they tighten money, uh, so and plus markets fear them. Oh, my gosh, she's raising rates. So today, we markets rose on spiking rates, not rising rates, spiking. So these two cannot continue like that uh, forever. Um, another one is oil. Today, we had a sharp rise in oil. Um, and whoops, see, how did that happen? OK, let's bring back oil here. Uh, up 1.7%. So again, oil is threatening to break out to mid to high 60s. Don't know if it has it in it. Uh, it's a manipulated market. How about dollar, the, the currency, basically? The dollar was weak today. Will this continue? Are we consistently trading with weak dollar? I'm not sure. So, And most importantly, lack of conviction. I need to see follow through. So tomorrow, show me follow through without a headline. Okay, Don't show me follow through on the headline. That doesn't count. Show me follow through without a headline. All right? So keep those in mind. Leadership. Apple, Google, blah, blah, blah. They're all into resistance territory, the ones I'm, I'm looking at. Spiking rates. How long will markets tolerate spiking rates? Potential um, a spike in oil. That should be uh, market negative. The dollar strength or weakness. Will the weakness continue? And will the market continue to trade with the weakness? And lack of conviction. Show me a follow through without a headline. Show me a fundamental move, a set of them a set of fundamental moves. All right, these are the things that are on my plate. What's coming up tomorrow? We have a few economic uh, news before the open, retail sales, um, uh, new claims of um, uh, new jobless claims, etc. but nothing scheduled from Eurozone that I can see. Uh, so we're still headline mercy of the headlines. Uh, let me show you rates. We do track them, and it's, they were important today. Let me zoom out, and I'll show you the significance of what has happened. Okay, I had a target. This was my target one based on technicals from here. We hit the target exactly yesterday and sold off of it. Today, we broke the broke above it with an exact doji. Look, if I, I can hide the 
it's a it's an indecisive candle but decisively green but throughout the day they didn't know whether they want to run it higher or backtrack but they still decided you know what we open green we're going to close strong and move on up the second target now is this one that i drew that's based on my expectations that's a lot of distance but if we get there that means we're this much closer to three percent rates on the 10-year how much market how much how tolerant will the bulls be in the market when rates are up to three that basically flips Yellen off and says I don't care whether you're going to raise rates or not the market is going to raise rates for you so you know just keep in mind that this could happen which brings to um, into the conversation the fact that there's a big assumption when we're talking about raising rates in the Fed we're assuming that the Fed is in control they can influence but the Fed is not in control. They can set standards, but the markets may or may not follow those standards. So the, there's the assumption that the Fed is in control. I think it's a false sense of security. Um, they are an influencer for sure, the influencer, but not the only driver of rates. Okay, I'm going to leave you with that. There are a few names that we talked about today. So uh, the wrap-up is done, and I'll run through the names. Uh, I didn't even look today at the transports because there was nothing red, so I can't imagine they were red. Okay, so that's the transports. Um, I know we looked at um, Boeing, Facebook uh, came into, somebody was saying, okay, is it is it uh, time to buy Facebook? I said, well, you know, I tell Facebook, show me the money again. We've called it, uh, you know, it bounced off of, a level where it needed to bounce but now it's back into resistance territory so I need to see a, a candle that's not market dependent I give it that it was up 1.85 percent so outperformed the market but show me that you can do it on a normal market day uh, Goldman Sachs was one of the winners today but then I cautioned that strong financials could be market negative because financials rise with rate because they make more money on rising rates so is this move rising rates if so it should be market negative so at some point those two will diverse di divest diverge yes diverge um credit put spreads uh, not here because i missed the credit put spreads although in april we did write it up with a credit a couple of credit put spread scenarios so if you did those good job you booked some for may and you may have booked some for june already um if the Whole Foods, you saw the note on that one. Walmart, you saw the note on that one. And I think that was it. Oh, Boeing, I mentioned. Good company. I warned that if they lose this level, this purple level, this is where they're going to come, or potentially. I warned that they failed to break out every time, so now they're, another candle will put them here. So I say, show me a candle where the markets are normal, and then I'll tell you, okay. Uh, you have a chance of breaking out. Otherwise, I anticipate it's going to meander in this area, and then once it gets squeezed enough, it's going to decide to go whoosh or up. Credit put spreads, I couldn't find any good levels with juicy premiums. However, I did find several 12, 13 cent premium trades for the next two, three weeks via credit put spreads, but I would have to step into um, 137 area or you know thereabouts this is too close for comfort for me so I I'm not willing to do that I can go to August and go down to 125 which is a much better level and if you believe in the company fundamentally and you think that the last six months gains are not going to be erased uh, then it's a good place to be otherwise I don't condone doing credit spreads into earnings earnings will come on like the 22nd or something like that uh, so and the July trade will have me step into 135, 130. I'm not willing to do that either, although they will have good yield. So it depends on your fundamental uh, understanding of the company. All right, I won't keep you long. Nick signing out. If you have any questions, please let me know.